If you're a real estate agent who is still manually importing your leads into your CRM or database from your lead capture sources, then you are wasting time and actually hurting your percentage of leads converted. So in our last video, I showed you how to build an online lead capture form, but today I'm gonna to show you how to automate that form with Zapier and how to import those leads automatically into your CRM to save you time and improve your chance to convert that lead into a client and that client into a deal. So let's get started. Hey everybody, it's me, Jacob Sharman, your real estate marketing expert. I have over 15 years of marketing experience specializing in web design and SEO, and I take that experience to help you grow your real estate business. Also, I am a realtor here with eXp Realty here in Houston. So if you're interested in joining our group and getting all of our amazing resources and stuff for free with no extra cost or split, go ahead and book a call with the link below. Now today we're talking about how to automate our lead capture forms. This is super important because if you have a lead that comes in through the online form that you built from our last video, but you're not getting them immediately into your CRM and getting them on some type of drip or picking up the phone to call them, they're just gonna move on to the next realtor, or the next website that they can find to give them the information in that moment. We're in this information age where everybody wants information now, so you have to give it to them. And one of the best ways to do this is with Zapier. And this even works for if you're doing online ads like Facebook ad with a lead gen form, and you need to get them immediately into your CRM so you're notified instead of just waiting to download the form every day and then manually upload it. One, you're wasting time on a repetitive task that you can automate with something like Zapier. And two, you're kind of hurting your chances to convert that lead because you need to contact them within the first five minutes. So whether that is you know, depending on the time of day where it's done with your smart campaign or whether you're actually picking up the phone and call them. So I'm gonna show you how easy it is to automate the online form that we built with JotForm. You can do this with any online form. You can go check out Zapier to see if your app, your, your form builder app is compatible with Zapier to your CRM. And I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step how to automate this and get this streamlined to save you time and increase your lead conversion percentage. So. Let's go ahead and dive in and I'm gonna share my screen. All right, so what you see on the screen right now is the form that we built in the last video. So this is an online lead gen form for any type of your lead magnets. So this could be your buyer's guide, your seller's guide. This could also be a list uh, to a saved search result of homes, maybe under a certain price point in your area or a certain area. Check out homes in Houston, Texas, Katy, Texas, or it could be something to, you know, a list of houses just listed coming soon or a list of open houses. So the possibilities are limitless and you just want to make sure that in your form that um, you have your first, last name, email, mobile number, and then your actual opt-in um, that usually you're required to have if they're opting in and you're going to be emailing them regularly. Um, for my CRM, I need at least have a first name. Um, to add to the CRM and um, the email. I've seen some people do it where you just ask email and if they don't provide the name, it's okay. And then they just use the email as the first name. I prefer to have the first name. I like to get as much information as I can for because it shows me that they're serious. Now, the one thing that you want to make sure that you have in place because remember, we want to verify their information. The way we do this is by emailing them the link to download or access that list on our IDX website. So you would put your link in here, like we showed you in the last video, that we want to make sure because this would send them the email. And if they gave us a bad email, then they're not getting access to this until they provide a good email. So make sure you have this. Now, if you want Zapier to just do everything for you, send from your email address and those things, you can delete this and I'll show you how to do all of that in Zapier. So you will need a Zapier account. There is a free account with limited number of zaps and tasks. So this is the actual workflows and this is how many times the workflow has been triggered in a given month. Now I have a paid plan. So I think it's about um, right around $30 plus tax a month. If you pay the whole year, it's pretty inexpensive. Uh, but every realtor should have Zapier. Again, I'm not affiliated with this. Um, but it does save you a lot of time on repetitive tasks. And I have some other videos you can go check out for the other uses on Zapier. So basically, it's really easy to make a Zap. 
you come in here, this is the dashboard when you log in, you can click create a zap and it will take you to the zap page and you'll choose your apps and your actions and your triggers. Or you can just really do it here. It's a little easier here. So first we'll come over here and we'll enter our form. So in our example, we use jot form. Now, if you use other forms like Wufu, um, it's in here. If you use, you know, paper forms, they're here as well. So find the form that you decided to use. Um, and if you're not sure which forms to use, I have a whole video on that as well. So we're going to use jot form and then we're going to want it to go to our CRM. So the moment they submit a lead, it goes right to our CRM and I use KV core. This is what we get for free at our brokerage. Um, and so I'm going to select it. And then the trigger is when, when this happens, this is what starts the workflow. So the trigger is going to be a new submission. So look, you can do a signed document the moment they sign, you can have it complete a step of actions, but we're going to have it do a new submission and then we're going to have it create a contact. Now there are times you can create a form to update contact information. If you want to create a form so they can go in there and do that, maybe you don't have that option available in the CRM um, or your IDX website to update their profile. This is something you can do, but I want to make sure they're in there. So we're going to do create contact. And then once you have selected everything, then we're going to say, try it. And if you're using a different CRM, just make sure that it creates a new contact, a new lead in your CRM. So if you were to click create zap, it would take you to the screen without anything. And this is when you would select your trigger and then your action. Now I'm going to quickly label this as well. So we're going to call this, um, jot form. I always tend to do jot form, um, to KV core. And then you could do like a uh, buyer's guide. Okay. And that way you kind of know where everything is going. And the great thing about Zapier, it will automatically save your changes. And if it doesn't, it will let you know. So the first thing is that we need to con connect jot forms. So if you haven't already logged in, you won't see this. You'll have a sign in and then you'll sign in, log into your account. It'll have a little pop-up window and then that will connect, connect Zapier to that. Just answer the questions. Very straightforward. But I have already done this, so I'm going to say choose and I'm going to select my account. Now, once you do this, after you've logged in, you're going to see your account and select that each time. So we're going to say continue and then we're going to choose a trigger. So anytime there is um, a submission in this form, so I found my form, the Houston Buyer's Guide, and now we're going to say continue. Now it's going to say test trigger. So it wants to test and make sure it's able to capture information. If you get this error, no submission found, it means you really need to go put a submission into your form. So this is really easy. So we can just open this form into a new window and we're going to test it um, with information. So I'm just going to pre-fill my information and then go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna say get access now. Now I'm gonna get an email as well with my link and now let's go back over here. So now if I say test trigger, it should find the information that I just submitted. So you're gonna get that a lot. So if there's multiple submissions in your database already, you can use one of those. I always recommend doing a test submission just in case you already had somebody register, you don't want it sending information to them. So. Uh, we're going to say continue with selected record. So if there's multiple in there, you can select which one that you want. So now you got to link your CRM. So in this case, we need to link KV core and it would be the same thing. You would click sign in. Now, um, if you've never signed into your KV core before with Zapier, then you will need to know your, your Zapier key. So you would just come over here to lead engine. And then when you come over to lead engine, I will show you you're gonna click lead drop box, and then um, all of your keys are in here. So I have mine grayed out, so <laughs> you can't use my key, but you would literally just click copy and then paste it in there, and then that would connect your Zapier, so, or your KV core to Zapier. So just follow those instructions. If you're using a different CRM, just continue those instructions. Once you're logged in, now it's time 
to connect those fields. So all the fields that we collected, first name, last name, email, mobile, now we're going to assign those form fields into the fields in our KV course. So very simple. So you don't have to fill out all of these. You're gonna do first name. We're gonna come in here and you're gonna scroll down until you'll see first name. So now the answered name is the full name, but we wanna keep scrolling until we find answered the first name field if you're using um, JotForm. So now we have that. And then let's go ahead and come down here and just go ahead and do the last name. All right, and then lead type. Now, depending on the type of lead magnet you have, you can select your lead type. So maybe you have a seller evaluation form or seller's guide, you would select seller. In this case, we're gonna select buyer. Um, you can also select both. And then now we need to assign the email. So we're basically gonna go answers and then we're looking for this field, your email. So once you have that, you click it and it goes in the field. And then you come down here and can do the same thing for mobile. So we're gonna come down and find the mobile number. Now it doesn't matter the way you name these fields just as long as you select the right field to go in here because that's what's gonna be stored. So we're gonna do a new lead status and then form or capture method. You can label this however you want. So you can say um, buyer's form. Okay, and then, um, so see, so you can see right here, home value form, so a buyer's guide form, the source, um, if this form is just on a single website or you have multiple forms and you're wanting to track where that came from, you could enter that source there. You don't have to. Um, date registered, we would just do created at. So this is the date. Um, and then if you are doing maybe homes in a certain area, uh, maybe check out the, the new just listed homes in Katy, Texas. Then we could come here and literally type in Katy, um, whatever. This is for you to track as much information as you want in the lead source. If interested in price and you did a homes under 300,000, put 300,000. Um, if you marketed a certain type of property, you could put that in. Street address, you can add notes into there that uh, downloaded home buyers guide. And then you can even come in here and add multiple tags. Just make sure that the multiple, multiple tags are separated by this pipe character right here, okay? And once you have that, you say continue, and then you come over here and say test action. Now it's gonna take that information and create it in your CRM. So if it was successful, it will tell you, you can go check. Um, I don't want to show you all the leads in my CRM with their information. So I know it worked. Um, I've already checked. So once that has been sent, then you'll say publish. It's very important that you say published. So that way it goes live and then it's going to lock the field so you can't edit them. If you need to edit them, you can click edit and then it allows you to save versions as well. So you can make notes that in this edit, I updated the email field or in this edit, I added last name or notes. So that way you can go track if there was a problem, you can go check and see which edit and you can restore back to a previous version if you made a mistake. Um, so now we can come back here to all of our zaps um, as it's loading and then we can see it. Now you can turn it on and off by just clicking the toggle button um, as you see. And now we have our buyer's guide form. So one other thing I wanna show you real quick, if you decided to delete that email field, that is okay. So what we can come to now is just click edit and we're gonna add a step. So the trigger started and then we can just go through a step of actions. So we could come here and literally say Gmail um, if you have Gmail, Outlook, whatever it may be, and then I could come in here and um, tell it to create an email. So we're going to send email, continue, and then um, I can choose whatever email account that I want. And then once I select it, I go through 
And then your to field would be the email address. So you would take it from here. You'd go through, select the email, create your subject. You could choose your from or enter it in. Um, if you want to CC somebody, um, you can do your from name. You can do Jacob S with J and M Realty Group. So you can do that as well. And then the reply to email, you can select it, which would be your email address, okay? And then putting your subject, and then you can choose whether you wanna do plain or HTML, maybe you wanna bold some things or insert hyperlinks, but you basically create the body of your email like we did before in the previous video, including the link as well to download. And then basically you would click continue and then it would send an email for you. Just wanna make sure that you have deleted this um, under settings, that you have deleted this field and you're not emailing them twice. So that's kind of the basics of how to use this. There's so much more you can do uh, with this. Like I said, I have created a some other videos on Zapier, so I recommend that you watch them and you get your leads automated. All right, I hope that information was helpful. Zapier is an amazing tool and I think every real estate agent should have it. I am not an affiliate with Zapier, so I don't get paid to say that, but it does save me about 30 to 40 hours in my business alone, just because it can automate repetitive tasks. So if you wanna see more of what Zapier can do, go check out some of the other videos in my YouTube channel and in the description below. And if you are interested in joining my real estate group here at eXp Realty and getting access to top of the line social media, social media content done for you, um, KV Core and CRM training, websites and sales funnel templates, you get access to all this with no extra cost or split. Simply just click the link below to book a call with me. It's a no pressure call to show you what it looks like for you to be a realtor and real estate agent here in our group here at eXp Realty inside the Wolfpack. So I encourage you to do that. And if you want to keep up with the latest content that I have on real estate marketing and being a real estate agent, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, give this video a like and hit that notification bell and I will see you guys in the next video.